Anne Lamott is actually a famous American author. I encourage you to look up more of her work. Um, this short piece of writing that she has done fits quite well with my expectations for you for a narrative essay. Um, it is fairly short, you can see. And I have put notes here um, along the side to remind you of some of the important things that you need to remember. Um, Obviously, she did not do this for my class, but if she were in my class, she would do a heading just like this. She would center her title and make sure all the major words were capitalized. The colon here indicates that what comes after the colon is a subtitle, and you still capitalize all the major words there. And A is capitalized because it's the first word in that subtitle. You do not have to use a subtitle though, but you will have a title that should be centered with no extra line spaces before or after the title. Uh, let's see. She has written an introductory paragraph that follows those patterns that we have talked about in English 101 uh, that, that will be useful for any essay that you write. You want to start with a hook, something to catch your reader's attention. Alone we are doomed is about as attention grabbing as you can get. Short sentence, you can really make good impact with a short sentence. So don't dismiss short sentences. Then she goes between the hook and the thesis. The thesis is the last sentence of her introduction with some background and context. Um, sometimes we say bridge to the thesis, so that's this note here. And then she ends with the thesis statement. And for your narrative essay, the thesis should say what you have learned from your experience that you're writing about. So this last sentence is the thesis. Then we'll follow the basic elements of plot structure. So um, I encourage you to watch the video on plot structure so you understand the terms I'm using here. Um, but the exposition, that's the first part of establishing the plot, starting plot structure. You will have who, where, um, when all the events are taking place. So who is going to be four teenage boys, that's here. When, it was 15 years ago. Um, what was happening? There was a fire. Uh, where was it? In a coastal town. Okay. Um, so that sets the context. Okay. Um, and this paragraph that gives context ends with the inciting incident. That is where um, something happens in the story that sets the other events in motion. So that is your inciting incident, and that is here. It caused a blaze that burned or destroyed 12,000 acres of wilderness and nearly 50 homes. So a huge fire was accidentally caused by these boys. Um, then we have rising action, and you can have lots of elements of rising action. Um, you see on this graph, that rising action can be a little jaggedy. So you might have several incidents of rising action. Um, you may have two or you may have one. Hopefully you'll have kind of more than one. It really develops the plot. And notice how long between the exposition and this inciting incident or beginning of the conflict. That goes way up and then the falling action after the climax is usually shorter. So as I've written for you, these two and a half paragraphs, this one and the next paragraph and a half leading to the next page are the rising action. So it takes up the probably majority of the story, really. Then you have the climax. And look, the climax happens at the end of a rising action paragraph and at the end of a sentence. It's not even a whole sentence. So think of the climax not necessarily as like a big kind of explosive sort of part. As I think of um, action movies kind of have a big thing that's a climax. 
But when we're ter- telling narrative essays or telling narratives, stories that are about our personal experiences, often it's a very subtle thing. Like somebody said something or did something that changed the direction of this increasing conflict that was happening. And so it can be very subtle. And here it is a subtle thing. And the signal that we get that it's about to change is uh, we have uh, the president of the board of firefighters giving a speech and he at the very end digresses from what you might have expected him to say. So we are getting something unexpected here. After the climax, you have the falling action. So you're going to write what happens after that person said or did something that made a change or after you said or did something that made a change. So you can see falling action there. Finally, you have a resolution. So the resolution um, is how things were resolved, obviously. Um, what loose ends get tied up and that sort of thing um, can happen as part of the resolution. And for your final paragraph, make sure that you not only say what you learned from the situation again. Remember in academic writing, we, we imply a thesis at the beginning or at the end of the introduction, which is the beginning of the essay. And we also um, end with a reiteration of the thesis. So again, saying what you learned um, in a different way uh, than you said it the first time, but say what you learned and apply it to other situations, which Anne Lamott does so well here.